when it comes to game animation, a lot of the time it can look insanely complicated, when in actuality, the methods behind them are super simple once you understand how it's done. With Tears of the Kingdom so close to release, I've been obsessed with these incredible animations, and it got me thinking, I could do that, right? So with a bit of research, not only did I discover the techniques used to create them, but that there's essentially three core principles to making any effect. So let's break these down one at a time. Shadow, will you marry me? So the main problem with game animation is budget. I'm not talking about money or time. I'm talking about triangles. If you throw a 2 million polygon water sim into your game engine, not only will you go to jail, but whoever opens that game is going to suffer third degree burns from their PC exploding. So instead of going the literal route, we need to use techniques that optimize this workflow while still maintaining the feel and style of whatever effect we're trying to create. And this brings us to the solution. For most effects in games, especially in things like MOBAs, you'll see hundreds of VFX animations happening all the time you probably just don't know it. And the trick to creating these is by using the three core principles. But we first need to understand layers. So let's actually look at a simple example here of this fireball. You have three elements here, the head of the fireball, the trail, and finally the sparks. Each of these have their own purpose to the effect. The primary focus is the fireball, the secondary is the trail to indicate motion, and the final are the sparks to show some velocity. Now this is actually a super simple effect and there isn't a lot of layering going on here. When you get to some of these more complex shots, you'll see there are so many other small effects layered underneath and on top to elevate the final animation. Now I know you're asking, Smeef, how do I actually make these kind of animations? Well, like I said, it's a combination of three core principles. And I actually found out all about this through an amazing course on Skillshare. If you don't know, Skillshare has literally hundreds of career focused classes on things like photography, cooking, and of course, Blender. VFX for Games by Gabriel Aguiar runs through the complete basics and fundamentals of what makes an effect awesome. And with Skillshare, no goal is too small as their teachers like Gabriel walk you step by step through the process. I'm a long time user of Skillshare and I can authentically say that this has leveled up my skills as an artist. If you want to test it out, well, Skillshare has hooked me up with an amazing offer for you. The first 1,000 people to use the link below will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Click the link in the description and thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. So let's now run through creating something that looks complex, but is actually super simple. This ground impact is done with more or less two layers. And we're going to start this off with the first principle, which is modeling. Now, I know you're probably saying, Speev, what does modeling have to do with game animation? Well, all the animation and effects we create are based off of simple geometry like this. It is by far the easiest part of the process. And if you don't know how to model, don't worry, it's super easy. So, for example, this impact shot. The charging effect is done with a cylinder, and all you'd have to do is take the top and bottom caps off. For the impact on the ground, it's using a flat plane, and the sparks coming off of it are also flat planes. I told you it was easy. <laughs> now that we have the foundation of the effect, let's move on to the second principle. This is where the meat of the animation comes to life. Essentially, we want to push pre-made textures, shaders, and elements through the mesh that we just created. And this is known as scrolling textures. This is the fundamental principle to almost all of the VFX animations that you see in some of your most beloved video games. For example, these waterfalls in Mario Galaxy, or even something as simple as a fire effect in League of Legends. All of this is made possible with scrolling textures. Now, it gets a bit tricky to explain, so let me show you the basics. To start this impact effect, I have a simple white dot texture. Using transparency, I can isolate just the dot. So whatever game environment this is added to, it'll make sense for it to be there. Now with the dot isolated, I can shift the color hue 
to something that's more correlated to an explosion like a deep orange. From here, I can play around with the shape of the circle, and once I'm happy with it, I can move on to the final step, which is animating the scrolling texture. This part is super easy since we're just animating a value slider. So I'll keyframe the circle increasing in size, move forward and shrink it down again slightly, then finally push it all the way through until it disappears. Now with the animation done, you can see the basic process. And this applies to all the other effects that are layered on top of this shot. But you probably noticed something incredibly obvious. This animation looks disgusting. <laughs> which leads me to the final principle. <laughs> Timing is one of the 12 principles of animation, and it heavily applies to what we're doing here. Without proper timing, we get these types of results, and it's just not appealing at all. What we want instead is that super satisfying explosion. Mm. Mm, so good. And this is all done inside of the graph editor. I have a full tutorial on the graph editor if you want to get more comfortable with it. But essentially for this animation, the easiest reference I found is dropping a rock into a lake. We get the initial impact followed by a small relapse before shooting outwards into the final explosion. So with some very simple adjustments in the graph editor, I was quickly able to change the animation from this to this. And with a few other elements added to the scene like the energy charging, cracks on the ground and some aftershock sparks, you have yourself this. Now, this is great, but I know you actually want to make effects like this, not just see some quick overview. And if you want to learn how to do that, you'll need to watch this video right here.